everyone. Welcome back to the House of Blessed Love. My name is Carrie. Thank you guys for joining me. So today is Wednesday, July 21st, and this is a Floss Tube channel, which is a channel mainly devoted to cross stitch. Every now and then I might throw in some punch needle, hand embroidery, even possibly some knitting, but for the most part, it's all about the cross stitch. Um, so first and foremost, I just want to say a huge welcome, whether you are a new subscriber or you've been with me since the very beginning or anywhere in between. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel, watching my videos. I uh, really, really appreciate it. Uh, so it's been a little while again. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, you guys. Um, I, when I came back to FlossTube, I really had every intention of trying to update once a month and then summer hit. And it doesn't matter if we have things planned or not, summer is just busy. I don't know. <laughs> the months just fly by and I don't even realize that we're into June or we're into July already. Yeah, crazy, right? Uh, so one of the big reasons I did not get an update in June was my husband actually took off two weeks at the end of June. And we didn't go anywhere on like a big vacation, but we did some little day trips around the area. We took one day and went to Green Bay and Appleton. So yep, I got to go to the Stitching Bee. And I did good. I stayed within my Stitch From Stash budget, which I am, yes, I am still doing Stitch From Stash. Uh, then another day we went up to um, Munising. So I live in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. So we went to Munising and we did the boat tour around the Pictured Rocks, which was really cool. I've never done that before. And so that was a lot of fun. We had a couple days where we went out to local restaurants and stuff. So like I said, while we stayed home, we still did a lot of stuff. <laughs> and so, um, oh, and the Pictured Rocks, if you follow me on Instagram, which I always link in the description box underneath the video, I did post some pictures and I will probably post some pictures at the beginning and at the end of this video just because I have a lot of pictures. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we just, I was just busy. And then before I knew it, we're into July and we've got the 4th of July and we didn't go anywhere, but you know, it was still just a busy weekend. And yeah, and it's been hot. That's the other reason. It's been hot. And so we do have central air in our house, but our house is an old house. And in the wintertime, all of the hot air seems to escape really easily. And in the summertime, all the cool air escapes the house really easily. So the house gets warm no matter what. And so we have, my husband came up with kind of a really very good plan with our fans. And so we always have fans going. And with it being warm and the fans going, you can't really hear me as well on the videos. So I'm hoping you can hear me okay. I was able to shut the fan off in our living room, but the fan is still running upstairs. So I'm, I'm hoping it's not gonna be too distracting. But anyway, I, yeah. I am just looking at the table and I've got so much stuff to share with you guys. So we're gonna dive in. Um, so I hope everyone's been doing really well. I hope you guys have had a great summer so far and have gotten lots of stitching and lots of whatever you enjoy doing in the summer. Okay, so I'm gonna start with FFO'd or fully finished objects and there's a lot I didn't think I had that much done but I actually got quite a bit done apparently June and July were my finishing months <laughs> so that's always good um so I'm gonna start I'm just gonna grab okay so I mentioned the 4th of July weekend so 4th of July weekend is actually not that great here <laughs> because our Newfoundland uh, Lucy she's four and she absolutely hates loud noises so as you can imagine, fireworks, it's a nightmare. Uh, so what we do is she feels safest upstairs in our bedroom. She has her own crate and everything. She's been crate trained since, she, since we first brought her home. And so that's her safe spot. So I tend to go to bed early on that weekend or at least go upstairs early. And I can't stitch up there. The lighting's not greatest, the greatest. So especially if I'm stitching on a higher count fabric, I, I just can't see. So what I did this year is I put together four pillows and I just I cut all the fabric I pinned everything and then I took them upstairs and sewed at night when we when we went up for bed so I ended up getting four pillow finishes which is awesome so this was this is one of them this is from Punch Nail Primitive Stitcher magazine I believe it's the 2018 summer issue these are by Barbara Anna and they are the Liberty bowl fillers and there's three designs and I've stitched two out of the three. And so this one I finished a couple, I wanna say back in 2019, I think I finished this guy. 
and I just finished him. This was a uh, canvas, like an artist canvas block that Walmart used to carry. They came in a pack of three. They unfortunately don't carry them anymore. So I went ahead and I finished this one into a little pillow. So I have, there's the dog, the mouse, and a cat. So I just, I have to stitch the cat. And then that's the back. It's just um, red fabric with some stars on it. So I did chenille trim around the edge. I'm pretty sure that that came from Kathy at Dying for Cross Stitch um, from her Facebook page. And so I did the chenille trim and then I just did some white twine and I put some star star buttons. I think I got those at Walmart. I'm pretty sure I got those at Walmart. Um, I think this one I stayed fairly true to the call for colors. I don't think I changed a whole lot. But this little guy was a big headache. So he was the one I stitched the first night that I took these upstairs. And I did the whole thing. I stitched my sleeve and everything. Brought it down the next day to turn it right side out because I just cut a little bit in the back. I stitched all the way around. Oh, and I sew in hand. So just in case you're wondering, did I haul the sewing machine upstairs? No, I, I sew by hand, or hand sew. So anyway, so I sewed the whole thing and then I cut the little slit on the back to turn it right side out. Turned him right side out and the two top corners completely blew apart on me. Now I've been hand sewing pillows with cross stitch pillows probably for the last two years roughly. And I've never had that happen. I've had like one corner blow out on me, but I've never had both. And so luckily I left quite a bit of extra fabric on the cross stitch part. So I was able to just bring the seam in just a little bit and I just sewed a whole nother seam and reinforced those corners like crazy. So this one worked out much better, thankfully. But he's super cute. I love, you guys know I love Barbara Anna. So <laughs> anything Barbara Anna designs, I love it. Okay, and I'm trying to figure out where to put these because I've got so much. <laughs> okay, so we'll stick with what I finished over the course of the 4th of July. So this one, next one is a hands-on design. Sorry, my, my, my stacking, everything just <laughs> started to slide on me. So this is hands-on design. This is where Liberty dwells. Um, so this is the pattern. You get both patterns. You can do the pillow or you can make it into the drum. Um, I went ahead and did the pillow first, but I saved the velveteen because I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the drum as well. And I don't think I used, I did not use the call course, I don't think, in this. Um, I think I just used whatever I had on hand. So I stitched this on a 40 count. I stitched the pillow on a 40 count. I'm just going to move. And so there, that one is all finished. Yeah, I did not use call fours. <laughs> I just used whatever I had on hand. Unless a DMC was called for, then I used the call for DMC. And I don't remember. I know it's a seraphim, but I have no idea what the color of the fabric is. But he turned out really cute. And then I just used... This was a patriotic pack of cotton sewing fabric that I got off of Joann's. I ordered it online. I think it was Joann's. It's either Joanne or Hobby Lobby, I'm not sure. I had to order paint, and so I ordered um, a pack of fabric as well. I think it was Hobby Lobby, actually, now that I think about it. So, but I think it's really cute. And of course, I always have one pillow, one, where my tag is upside down. Always. There's always one. <laughs> doesn't matter. doesn't matter how many I do or how few I do, there's going to be at least one that's going to have that. And so then I did the twine around the edge for the trim. I did three twines for the bow, a white and two different size, just regular twine. And then I did the star button, or the star, this is a wooden blank that I painted gold. And then I did a heart button on top. And then I did add the little rusty pin, um, safety pin with a couple buttons. But I'm super happy with this one. This is such a cute design. I really like that series from um, Hands On Design where they do the, the pillow and the drum. Okay, so next, might as well just stick with what I finished on the 4th of July, which it just so happened that everything I finished on the 4th of July weekend was patriotic. Um, so this is from Primitive Stitching on Etsy. I finished this last year, maybe? Yeah, I think I finished the stitching last year. Um, I mean, of course, I had to stitch that. It's a, an adorable sheep, and it's patriotic, and I love it so much. This is a 40 count, I have absolutely no idea. It's a 40 count linen, I, I could not tell you. It's, 
probably a seraphim. It might be a Rolanda. I'm, I'm not sure. And then this is just gray stars, and it's all the way on the back, too. And this fabric I got from Michael's when we went to Green Bay um, and Appleton. We stopped at Michael's and grabbed. I grabbed that fabric. And then this is just a star trim that I got from, I think, I think it might have been Michael's last year that I got that. And then I just, these two little plastic buttons, little star buttons, I got those at Walmart. And then this one, it's really funny, got kind of scuffed when I was um, ironing it. And I actually really like that it got scuffed. I think it looks cool like that. I, I almost went in and scuffed the other one too, but I, I didn't. I left it because I didn't want to break it or uh, have it come off or anything like that. But so, super happy with that one. Okay, and then this is the last one that I finished over the 4th of July weekend. So this is one that I designed myself. This is currently available in my Etsy shop. So I just, this is a 28 count, I think I put the linen that I used in the listing, but I don't remember offhand what it is now. I know it's a 28 count, I'm sorry. Um, and I stitched this with all, uh, the, with all DMCs. Oh, this one, sorry, I forgot. I, I think, again, I just used colors that I had on hand. I don't think I used the call fours, except maybe in the sheep. I probably used it in the sheep, um, but I just kind of grabbed what I had. If I had a DMC, I probably used it, but I know I did do some changing in the flag. I did some fancy floss or some hand-dyed floss in the flag, but I think I used quite a few of the DMCs in that. Okay, so like I said, this one is charted all in DMC, and I just took the rose fabric. This is fabric I got from Walmart, I think several years ago when they put out their patriotic stuff. And then the lace, this is a heart lace that I got from Walmart. I got that, I wanna say right around probably Valentine's Day, I think, because I, I had gotten it to do a Valentine's Day finish and I just haven't done that yet. And then I did put the rusty safety pin and a couple of buttons there. But I love how that turned out. The only thing I would say is that I could probably bring this part just a little bit closer here. But overall, I mean, it's really cute. So I'm, I'm just, I'm nitpicking at that point. Okay, so that's what I finished 4th of July weekend. Okay, so before that, I finished this one. This is another one that I designed that you can find in my Etsy shop. Uh, again, it's on the same linen is what that other piece is. Again, I think it's listed in my shop and I just don't remember what it is. But it's stitched in all DMC. And so I used, this is some patriotic whale fabric that I used on the back, which I love it. I think it's so cute. Um, and I did twine around the edge and then I put the giant bow on here uh, with a seashell. I got the seashells at Walmart kind of over in like the home, no, like over by their flowers and the vases and stuff, they've got, you can use those for decorations. And I had bought those several years ago uh, to do, when I do product photos for my shop. Um, and so I just grabbed one and used that as the center of the bow, but I love it. I think it turned out so cute, but I was laughing because I <laughs> took a picture of this and I sent it to uh, my stitchy wife, Jen. And I'm like, the first thing that, that comes to mind is the Sir Mix-a-Lot song, um, but in my head, I had it, I like big bows and I cannot lie. I, you know, I'm a child of the 80s and the 90s, so, you know, that was the first thing that came to my head because the bow is a little bit big compared to the pillow, but I love it, so it's all good. Okay, so that was pillows. Uh, I finished a Biscornio. Uh, so in 2018 for Mania, I did a Biscornio Mania where I started 18 new Biscornios. And with this one being finished, I have now officially finished three <laughs> of the 18 that I started. Yes. So we're getting there. But isn't it cute? Oh my gosh. So this one is from, hold on, I have the paper. This one is from the floss box. And her Biscornews are numbered. So this is Biscornu 442. But oh my gosh, it's so cute. And then this is the back. So this one I used all of the called fours except for the pink. The pink color is a color in cotton. Everything else is a called for DMC. And then I stitched this on 14 count Ada that I dyed with coffee. And I really do like stitching Viscornews on Ada. They just, I don't know, I, I just have such a much, 
I have so much of an easier time putting together a Biscornu that's been stitched on Ava. I don't know why, I just do. Okay, so then I showed this one in my last video. I was working on it, I was close to being done. So this is In Her Garden by Lucy Beam. And I misspoke in my last video and for some reason I called her Lizzie Beam. It's not, it's Lucy. And so I just, I love this one so much. It turned out really cute. So I did finally finish it and I actually fully finished it. And so there is mine. And I stitched her on a 40 count. Again, it's a Seraphim. I don't know the color. I can guess prairie grass. We can guess prairie grass for everything because that's what I do. Uh, but no, I have, it's a Seraphim. I just, I don't know. Um, and so I used some of the called fours. I believe the called fours were general arts, I think. Hold on, let me check. I already threw it down. Yes, the called fours were general arts. And so if I had the called four, I used it. If not, I just changed it to um, a hand dye that I had on hand. And I just, I love it. It turned out so cute. I love the dress. Um, the dress is a series of straight stitches, and I think it was such a cool effect. Um, the bees are um, Algerian eyelet stitches. So that was kind of fun. I don't usually do patterns with specialty stitches, so that was fun to do. And then for the finish, I used a six inch hoop and I painted it kind of to match her crown, um, which is funny because the gloss color is Peacock from Gentle Arts and the paint color is Peacock from Waverly. So they kind of match actually, which is kind of cool. And then I did some just some dots along the edge, white and pink. I kind of tried to make it look like flowers. I don't know if it worked. I think it kind of worked, but I like how it turned out. And then of course I did a whole bunch of fun um, fabric yo-yos. There we go. I make so many of them. I should know them, right? And what I did, this was, this is cool. So I had a charm pack from Walmart, which is pre-cut six, six inch squares. And those worked really well for fabric yo-yos because for these little ones, which I used the top of a pint mason jar, the lid, the, just the, the top, the little flat piece, um, I used that and I traced that around and cut that out for my these smaller ones. The bigger one is actually a spool of ribbon that I have. I used that and traced that. Anyway, and so on those little six inch squares, I could get two of the smaller ones could only get one of the big one, but that's okay. But it worked out really nice because I didn't have to chop up a huge piece of fabric and end up with weird cuts and stuff. So that was fun. And then the only thing I did a little different is instead of using all buttons, I used this little flower, which is actually a ribbon. And I could just cut one of the little flowers off and I used that for the center. And then I had some cute little um, charms. So I just kind of cut the top where you would hook, where you'd attach it to a necklace. I just kind of, I trimmed that off with my metal cutters. And then I stuck those on too. And I, I did that in the center here is a flower. And that's the same thing, it's a charm. But I'm super happy. So I'm really happy to have that one done because that turned out just so cute and bright and fun. A little bit different than my normal color palette. Uh, okay, what else do I got here? Sorry, stuff is like falling everywhere and okay. So this next one, I actually just recently finished. This is a freebie. So this is from Melissa at Pinker, Pinker and Pumpkin Quilting. And I will put a link to her blog. She has got so many adorable free patterns. And this is called Betsy U, E-W-E, -E, for the sheep. And I just, I love it. I love her so much. We're going to go with her because it's Betsy. It's so stinking cute. So this stitched up pretty quick. I think I stitched this in like two days. This was stitched on dark cobblestone, a 32 count Lugana that I got off of 123 Stitch. I stitched this. The called fours are DMC. I think I didn't use any of the called fours. <laughs> I just went ahead and grabbed some hand dyes that I thought looked good. And so I love it. It's so cute. And then I got this grapevine, this little grapevine wreath at Michael's a couple years ago, I think. I've had it for a little while. The ribbon, I'm pretty sure I got either Michael's or Joanne's. I'm not sure which one. And then, of course, I used the same little rose fabric that I did uh, backing the um, hands-on design pillow. 
that's what it is, and then I just put a star in the center. I love it. And so then he's got a little hanger, and so he hangs on my wall. Love that one. Okay. Um, hold please while I switch around. Okay. So then last, fully finished. Uh, so this is from Not Forgotten Farm. This is Samuel and Elizabeth, which I think I was working on in my last video. And this is stitched on a 40 count. It's like an oatmeal color. I know I got it off of one, two, three stitch. It's just a very basic oatmeal linen. I love it. It's got a little bit heft to it, so it's really nice to work on. And I used all of the cauliflower borders on this one. I did not change anything. And how cute. It turned out so adorable. I, I love this one. I just love this pattern so much. Uh, and I, so again, this is a six inch hoop. I painted it a very dark navy color and I distressed it a little bit. And then I put, I kind of tried to make stars. I don't know if they really look like stars. Some of them do, but I, I distressed them. And so they kind of, it all blended in together. They look okay. And then I just did a simple little ribbon on the top and the little angel charm or I think it was a button actually. Uh, I just put that in the middle. But super happy with that too. That one gets to hang on the wall. It's kind of nice to have some hanging stuff too. Okay. <sighs> Into what I have worked on. This is going to be in no particular order. There is going to be finishes. There's going to be works in progress. There might be some new starts. I don't know. It's just a little bit of everything. And I think I grabbed everything that I've worked on. I honestly don't know. It's been over over a month. So, um, and I do apologize. Everything is still in the bags, which I do because number one, I'm trying to keep everything together, which I already have a floss that just fell out somewhere. I, I don't know where it goes. Hopefully as I go through this, I'll figure it out. Um, and I also try to keep it away from the new feet, which would be hair and wool. So yeah, cause she roams around while I'm doing these videos. Okay. I, I'm not sure if I showed this in my last one. I don't exactly remember when I finished this. But I was working on Snowman of Snowflakes, Snowman of Snowflakes from Ben Creek, which this is a kit. It comes with 18 count linen and you use the pearl cotton on this. And I did go, I did get it fully finished. And like I said, I apologize if I showed this already. I just, I don't remember if I did or not. But there he is, all done. I love him, he turned out so cute. The only thing I will say is I ran out of floss colors. So I was kind of disappointed. Uh, they, I, they could have used like one more piece of every color, honestly. Uh, I almost ran out of the gray. I was able to finish the gray, thankfully. Um, I had to change the black part here. This was actually supposed to be 3371 and they did not include that with the kit. So luckily I had some black and uh, in pearl in the same size pearl cotton so I was able to sub that um, but I am glad that I stitched this one I have another kit of theirs that's really really big it's the Noah's Ark one and you do the same thing it's stitched on the 18 count with the pearl cotton and so I'm glad to know that I may run out of floss so I can go ahead and pick up some extras before I start that one but he turned out adorable I love him and I still kind of want to stitch this again on like a 40 count and, you know, and just have the, the two together. I don't know why that just, I don't know, having different sizes of things, making him for, go from really big to really small. I just think would be really kind of cute, but these kits are fun to work on. I didn't know how I would like stitching on the, um, on that kind of fabric, but I actually really enjoyed it. Sorry. Then I dropped that. <laughs> okay. Uh, so next, okay, this is another finish. And again, I don't remember if I showed this or not. Um, so I apologize if you guys have already seen this. This is the Hocus Pocus freebie. I'm just going to flash real quick. So this is one from Shepherd Bush where you buy the button and you get the pattern. Now, I did not attach the button yet to this one. I can't remember why I didn't. I think because I stitched it all in silk, so I didn't, but that's the button. Is this black sunflower? So I still, have to, I still have to do that, but otherwise all the stitching is done. And so there he is. Isn't he cute? And I stitched him on a 36 count. 
I, I don't have the, I don't know what the fabric is. I'm sorry. I know it's a 36 count linen and I stitched him with all dinky dye silks. But cute. So that'll make a cute little, probably a pillow. Probably, because that's what I usually do is I turn everything into pillows. Okay, so next is, okay. I, I think I put in some stitching since I last showed this one. So this is, we're just gonna go with the Halloween Witch from Madame Chantilly, because I, I, I don't know, I'm sorry. Uh, this was a piece that I started as a stitch along with Jen Upton Stitches, I think two years ago now? I'm not sure. Okay, and that is where I am now. So yeah, I think since I last showed this, I put in the books, I think. Uh, I did actually have, so down here next to the books, there's a paint can. I did actually have the paint can in here. You might even be able to see, see the stitches. Yeah, I put that too low. So I had to rip that out and now I have to redo it because it's always fun to stitch and then have to restitch all the time. That's, that's great. Um, needless to say, I put this one away because it frustrated me, <laughs> but I would like to get it back out because I'm, I'm, I mean... I'm about half, close to halfway done, you know, so I'd like to have that done. And it is super cute pattern. Okay, again, I think I've worked on this one since my last video. I, I gotta do videos more often, don't I? Because otherwise I totally lose my place of what I'm working on. So this was another Biscornia that I started um, in 2018. For Mania, this is Barbara Anna, this is the Halloween Scornia. And I am stitching this on, oh, I'm sorry, I totally forgot. I forgot what I'm doing. This is a 32 count fabric from uh, Hand Dyed by Stephanie. This is a fabric that Jen gave me. Um, I believe it's called Gilius or Gellius, um, but it's, it's really pretty, so. Okay, back to the Halloween Biscornia. Just a reminder, okay. This is a 14 count Ada that I'm stitching this one on that I dyed. And I think I'm using some of the called fours. Uh, so there we are. All they're, all they're missing down here is the black line. And like I said, I'm not sure if I showed this, but the only thing I did change is because this one called for DMC variations and I didn't have those. So the pumpkin is a solid DMC and then the sides here are a variations so I went ahead and I used a just a variegated orange and then this in here is supposed to be another variations and I I didn't have it so I think I just grabbed a dinky dye silk that was similar in, in color but overall it's coming out really cute so I would like to have this one on for Halloween too I don't, I don't think I've ever had a Halloween scorn you. I don't think I've finished one yet. I've started several. I don't think I have finished one yet. So that would be cool to have that done for Halloween. Okay. And I think I put in a little bit in this one since I showed it. This is Pineberry Lane. Hold on. And this is one that I actually did print the cover photo. So this is Mrs. McGuire's Garden. It's very cute. I really do. I really like Pineberry Lane patterns. I'm stitching this on a 40 count. I'm sorry, I don't know the color. I think this is a Rolanda fabric. But I am stitching this in all the called for DNCs, unless I didn't have the called for DNC, because, you know, it's in another project somewhere. Then I just changed it to something that was similar. But it is stitched with all DMC. And I think since I last showed it, I added in more of down here I think I don't know I really like this one but for some reason the minute I pull it out to stitch it I get like nothing done like I put in like 10 stitches and I'm like oh, I don't really want to work on this anymore I don't know even though I love the pattern I love the fabric I, I love everything about it I just I don't know what it is it's kind of weird sorry and all of a sudden my eye got itchy I apologize okay this is an older whip so I've been trying to do that too I've been trying to pick out some older whips to finish um, this is, oh, and I actually have the cover photo. This is a primitive hair. This is Pumpkins in Love. I have no idea when I started this. It's been a while. 
And I'm stitching, oops, sorry. I just totally bumped the table too, I apologize. I'm stitching this on an 18 count Ada that I hand dyed. And I actually have a needle minder on here. <laughs> I don't usually do that anymore. But yeah, apparently we're just gonna take that off. It's a cute one, it's a little frosted pumpkin stitchery one. And that is where I am. So I have finished Mr. Pumpkin. I totally have him done. And I moved over and started on the Lady Pumpkin. So very, very cute. And then I did start putting in some of like the little stars or whatever, what have you, on the side. And I've already noticed that I'm totally off on the count on those and I really don't care because <laughs> they're just kind of floating in space so they can float wherever they want. And I'm gonna pause you guys real quick and I'm gonna be right back um, just because my phone cuts me off and it gets all weird when it does that. So I will be right back. Did you miss me? I know, on the actual video, it's like no time has passed at all. But anyway, I was talking about the Pumpkins in Love from Primitive Hair, and like I said, I started putting these guys in here, these little side stars or whatever, and yeah, they're totally off, but that's okay. And like I said, this was an um, 18 count that I just hand dyed with myself. So I would like to get, I would like to get that one done this year. That would be nice. Um, like I said, I'm trying to go through and get some older whips as well and I am finding that I actually really enjoy stitching on 18 count Ada. Um, for the most part I switched over to pretty much stitching on linen and even weave but I do actually enjoy 18 count Ada. It's kind of nice to work on. Okay yeah we're not gonna I'm not gonna fuss with that. Okay oh okay so we're gonna get in to cross stitch camp. <laughs> So if you don't know what Cross Stitch Camp is, it was thought up by Sherry Colorado Stitcher, which I will link to her floss tube channel. And basically it's just kind of a way to get stitchers together um, over the summer and stitch. Um, there is a Facebook group, which I will put a link to that. Um, but if you want to participate in terms of getting prizes, which how you get your prizes is at the first of June, July, and August, so at the very first of the month, you post a picture of the project that you're gonna work on with the fabric and the floss. Um, basically to show that you haven't started on it yet. And if you get that project complete within the month, then you get entered into a raffle or you know a, a giveaway type thing. And there's a whole bunch of people that sponsored and gave prizes. Um, my shop happens to be one of them. Um, I'm giving away a free PDF pattern from my shop. You can pick whatever you want um, if, if you're the winner. And um, yeah, so I, I'm doing that um, each month. So for June, I, I did go ahead and participate in it as well. Um, and you just hashtag with um, hashtag cross stitch camp and then you just um, put at Colorado Stitcher so she sees the post. Um, but for June, I decided to work on Betsy from Sheepish Designs. I decided to start on that. And each month there's a prompt kind of, of, of kind of help you to pick a project. And June's prompt was to stitch on something that um, was inspired, um, either inspired by somebody else or just kind of that you were inspired to work on. And I believe it was Lori at Mysterious Stitches that showed this piece, I think. Uh, I might be wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it was her. And it was part of, I believe, Cheryl Tranquil Stitches had done a series where floss tubers had gotten together and talked about different designers. And it was Lori that talked about Sheepish Designs. And I absolutely love this pattern. I fell in love with it. And I was able to get it from Teresa Kitten Stitcher, which of course I will link all this below. Uh, and I'm pretty sure she still has these available. Last time I checked, she does still have these available in her shop if you are interested. And not only did I start it, you guys, I started it, and this is, it's not a very tall pattern, but it's fairly long. I finished this in the month, which I was shocked. And so that is my Betsy. And I absolutely love her. Love, love, love her so, so much. She has every, this pattern has everything that I love. It has birds. Honestly, all it would need is a snowman, and it would literally have every single thing I love, but it has birds, it has sheep, it has, it's patriotic. It, it's just, it's perfect. It has a squirrel. It even has a squirrel. Yeah, I love it so much. 
So I stitched this on 40 count watercrest from, I believe it's a witchlet. You can get it on one, two, three stitch. I did not stitch with the called for colors. So the called for in this were MPI soaps and there is a DMC conversion. But what I did is I just looked up the MPI silks on 123 Stitch and I just grabbed hand dyed floss that I had that was similar in shade. So, but I love it. I love it. And I actually even pressed this one. <laughs> Normally I do these and they're still all wrinkled and everything. But this one I did press. Uh, I would like to fully finish it. I have a couple different ideas for fully finishing. I just have to, I just have to sit down and actually do it but I love that. I love it so much. Okay, so with that, we're going to move into the Cross Stitch Camp project for July. So I just started uh, July's prompt was to work on a piece from um, a designer that you have not stitched before. So that meant to me, well, I get to go buy a new pattern, right? So I ended up buying an entire series because I decided that I wanted to do another snowman window type finish. So if you're unfamiliar with the snowman window, I will insert a picture here of the snowman window. And I finished the snowman window, what was that, like my first year on Floss Tube, so 2018 I think. Um, that one was stitched on Ada. This one I'm stitching on linen. And this one is going to be a bunny window. <laughs> So I found these really cute patterns. They are on Wanderling Stitches on Etsy, which I will of course put a link to their shop. And I'm going to show you guys, this is the first one that I stitched. This is Harebell. And so I will insert the picture here because of course I bought the PDFs and so I just printed the pattern. Okay? So that is the first one. And like I said, I'm stitching this on a 36 count um, fabric. I think this is a Seraphim as well. And there's the first one. So I completed my July piece, which I just wanted to get one stitched. And isn't it adorable? Oh my gosh. And so there's going to be six of them. So this is the first one. So I'll have five more and then they're going to be put into that window frame, which I get the frames at Walmart. So, and that is in like the unpainted wood section, the craft section there, but I love it so much. And so I, but the called for us were DMC. I went ahead and I grabbed some hand dyes that I thought would look really good. And I, I think they can, I think he just turned out adorable. Uh, so I'm probably going to stitch the, I, I picked different colors for the bunnies and stuff. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do all of them in different colors or if I'm going to kind of like alternate, pick two different browns and alternate them. I'm not sure yet, but so I love it. I do. I love the series. It's, it's so cute. Um, I was so happy to see when it, when I found out that she had six of these bunnies designed already, and there actually is a seventh one as well, um, but that's a snow hair, so it, it's white, so you know it doesn't quite fit in with this set. But when I thought that there were six of them, and I was like, oh, those will fit, and then I counted out the stitches, and it would fit in the window. I was like, yes, because those are going to be so cute, and then I will have a spring summer window. Okay, so that is. Crossage Camp, June and July. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet for August. I have a couple different ideas, but August prompt is to stitch with something that you haven't stitched with before. So whether it's on a different count fabric or it's a different floss or fiber of some sort, I, I don't know. The problem for me is there's not a lot anymore that I haven't stitched with. So trying to come out, I'm not sure yet, but we'll see. Okay, so moving on again, older whips. This is a Barbara Anna. Oops. Okay. This is Crowded House. Tiny picture, but you get the idea of what it looks like. I don't remember when I started this one. It's been a while. This is on 32 count weeks. Tin roof, I think. And this is where I found out I don't care to really to stitch on weeks fabric. It's very floppy, but it is really pretty. And I am stitching this so there's only two called for colors. Uh, there's 310 and 920. So I am using 310 as my black. And then instead of doing just the one kind of orange color, I picked three different oranges to use throughout the pattern. They're all variegated. So I think this one is a, this one here, that is a color in cotton. And I believe the other two are most sale. 
but I love this. And I actually got some decent progress. Because I think when I pulled this back out, all I had was like this part here. And so I stitched all of this part down here and then I started up here. And so I would like to have this one done because it is really cute. And I have another one of her houses that I stitched a couple years ago. And I actually have that one finished and displayed. And so I would like to have that one done too. Okay. And I think I found where this thread goes. I think. I hope. <laughs> okay. So this is another um, Piscornium. And I don't know if I have... I do not have the overall picture, so I'll have to find it and insert it here. This is another one from the floss box, and so, sorry, okay, another one from the floss box, and I just dumped out all of the floss from there. This one is Buscornu number 517, and I still have no idea if this is goes in there, but it's going to go in there for now. This is another one I'm stitching on 14 count Ada. This is just the oatmeal Ada that you can get. I, the one I get is from Charles Craft. I get it at Walmart. And I think this is how, yeah, this is how it goes. So it's gonna be sheep and it's got flowers and it's gonna be really, really cute. So I am not using all of the called fours in this. Hold on. Sorry. Scattered brain. Okay. Um. Yeah, and that is where that green goes. So yeah, I found where that went. Uh, so this one is all DMC, but what I did is uh, for the the uh, border, I'm doing a, oh, I know why. Because the border is like one line of one blue and then another line of, you know, it, it uh, goes back and forth. And so instead of stitching that, I just went ahead and grabbed a variegated blue. So... That way I didn't, I could just stitch continuously and not have to stop and, and change colors and stuff. So, but yeah, I hope to get that one done soon because I really like that one. And let's try not to lose any more of the floss, huh? Okay. And another older whip. Lots of older whips in this one. So this one I started quite a while ago. So this is Snowflake Sail. This is Caroline Manning, very cute. This is from, let's see. This is the February 2016 uh, Just Cross Stitch magazine. Oh wow, and I have a needle and a needle miner on this one. <laughs> like I never do that. This is another 14 count Ada. This is a fabric flare because this is the printed Ada. And so when I, when I say printed data, see the back is white, the front is the color. So there is an actual definite back and front on this one. Okay, and I can fold it and you guys can see. Okay. But I, I don't even know the last time I had worked on this. I think when I pulled this back out, I finished the, I finished his scarf and I started here on that side of him. And then I kind of came over here and started working a little bit more on the sign, so. But he's cute, he's gonna be really cute when he's done. And I started a few of the Caroline, Caroline Manning Snowmen. I really like them, they're adorable. And I've just, I've never finished one. So I would just like to have one finished, just to have one finished. So, okay, and I'm using, this is all DMC. Yeah, I'm using all the called fours, except I think two of them I couldn't find, so I just switched to what I had on hand that looked similar. Okay. And then I worked on this one, not a ton, but I worked on it a little bit. Sorry. Um, this is... This is from the 2019 fall issue of Punch Needle and Primitive Stitcher magazine. It's called Autumn Bounty. It's another Barbara Anna, and I'll insert the model picture here. And I'm stitching this on a 40 count natural raw linen from 123 Stitch. And I think since I last showed this, I put in the actual, the guy here, the writer. I started putting him in. And I would have done more, except I'm missing his skin color. I would have finished his head here, 
and put in his hand, but for some reason, I must have used the skin color in another pattern, and I grabbed it out of here, and I didn't put it back. <laughs> so now I have to go find another skein of the skin color. Luckily, it's DMC, so not a big deal, but yeah. And I'm using probably none of the call fours, because the call four is all DMC, I believe. It's all charted in DMC. Yeah, it's all charted in DMC. I am using some of the called fours, it looks like, and then I changed some of it to hand dyed threads as well. So, but that one is really cute. Okay, so then we have Lady of the Flag. So I was working on Lady of the Flag in May um, every Friday. That was my mania, was to work on Lady. And I kept going into June. So I, I made some decent progress on her. So she actually has a head. <laughs> so like I said, I actually made halfway decent progress and I misspoke in my last video. The fabric is dried sage from Color and Cotton. My husband reminded me and I had mistakenly called it patina. Patina and dried sage are similar. Dried sage is a little bit darker. And in this light, for some reason, it's showing up really that's a little bit, I think that's a little bit truer, but it's actually a little bit darker. Anyway, the reason I rolled my eyes is I was stitching along on this. I was really proud of how far I was getting, you know, her whole head was done. I was coming down into here. I was super happy. And then I discovered that I miscounted over in here somewhere. And I got really, really upset. <laughs> this is one pattern that I did not want to have a miscount in. I did not want to have to fudge something and try to make it work. I wanted it to be, I wanted it to be perfect. As close to perfect as I could get it. So it was really, I'm, I'm really disappointed that I have a miscount in here. And I would go and rip out and redo. However, we changed all of her to basically fancy floss or hand dyed threads. So I, I really hate to do that. And I hate to rip out on linen because it can cause issues with the linen. And quite frankly, I just, I would have to rip out all of this, all of this, <laughs> potentially even more. I'm not sure exactly where the miscount came in. So I've put her away for a little bit, but I think what I'm going to do, as long as right here, as long as the flowers come up here and those sit where they're supposed to, I think I can fudge it and it should not be noticeable at all. It, it should, or very, it, I probably will know, you know, but you shouldn't really be able to tell too much. <sighs> Other than that, I love her. I think she's coming out beautifully. And having the head in, I, you know, her, her face and everything, I think she just she's going to look completely awesome. But I really lost steam after that because I was just so disappointed. Honestly, if my husband hadn't been home that day, I don't know. I, I, I might have done something stupid and just threw her away because I was so mad. I was so mad. Um, so I'm glad he was home, calmed me down, and was like, it'll be fine, you can get it worked out. <laughs> so I do need to pull her back out, I need to correct the mistake as best I can before I forget where the mistake is, and then I go back to her and get frustrated all over again. So I will probably, I will try and pull her out this Friday and at least get the mistake corrected. Okay, so now is the most current stuff that I am working on. And these are kind of my focus right now because they're gifts. So the first one, um, I'm almost done with. This is from Sweet Wing Studios on Etsy. It is called Give It to God. And I will insert the model picture here. Uh, they used to be known as under a different name. In fact, I have another pattern of theirs. I think it was Rabbit Valley Studios. I think I'm not sure um, but anyway their new name is sweet wing studios like I said they have an Etsy shop this one is a PDF obviously because I have I mean I had to insert the model photo this is going to be a gift for a very good family friend of ours she also happens to be our pastor and my husband picked this one out she's got it she, um, this 
designer of Sweet Wing Studio had a couple different patterns that I was looking for to make for this friend. Um, the reason I'm doing this is her birthday is at the end of the month. So I'm trying to get this done by the end of the month. Um, actually, I'm trying to have it done this week because we're probably going to be meeting or seeing her um, this weekend. And so I'm kind of hoping to have it done and be able to give it to her. Anyway, and so I had seen a couple patterns that I liked that would fit for her and my husband picked this one out. He liked this one the best. So this is being stitched on a 32 count linen. This is a seraphim, but there is no colorway. I'm not sure if this was a solo dye um, or one that I bought from a third party. I don't know. It just, it didn't have a tag with the name. And this was charted in DMC. Uh, aside from the blue, that was a classic color works milady's teal that was what was charted i used a rolanda blue a number 107 which unfortunately she does not have available in her shop anymore which really sucks because i like that color and then the white was charted in general arts chalk and i just used um dmc b5200 everything else was charted in dmc and the only things that i changed is this green here I changed that to a Mosail and the very, very light blue here, which is like the mattress, I changed that to another Mosail and then the center part, these little flowers here are going to have a center, which is going to be a yellow color and I'm using a Weeks for that. Um, let's see if I have the name. It would be Weeks Moon Glow is what I'm going to be using for that, but I'm almost done. I'm so happy. I started this one. A week ago maybe two weeks but yeah I got this one done really quick so like I said I just got to go in and finish a little bit more in the blanket and then as you could see in the model picture I've got to put in there's question marks here and I got to put in the little Z's there but and the face I got to do the faces but other than that we're close to being done and I love it um, so this is one normally I don't stitch patterns twice However, actually the next three patterns that you're going to see are patterns that I'm, I want to stitch again for myself. Um, this one was actually one originally that I wanted to stitch for myself and just so happened it made a good gift. So I will stitch that again um, at some point for myself, probably on a 40 count. But anyway, the next one is a Biscornia. So I am participating in an exchange on the Great Biscornia Swap Facebook group, which was started by Jen Upton Stitches. And so I will put a link to the group and I'll also put a link to Jen's floss tube, which if you have not watched her after you finish my video, you need to go check her out because she has, uh, she shows so much awesome stuff. So the Biscornia theme for this round, which I have not done a Biscornia swap in a while. It's been over a year, um, was birds. So I went ahead and I picked a pattern, a free pattern from Owl Forest Embroidery, which I will insert the model picture here. And I changed all the, col the colors because they do have DMC converted on here, but if you're unfamiliar with Owl Forest, they have PDF patterns, they have kits, they have all sorts of stuff, awesome, really cute patterns. And they have some great freebies too. Um, but they also do uh, their own hand-eyed floss. And so the, the model picture was done in their own hand-eyed floss, which I don't have any of those. So... I just grabbed floss that I had on hand that was similar and I love this so so much it's so cute so the only thing I've left to do on here is just the back stitch line for putting the biscornia together but all of the cross stitching is done and I love it it turned out so cute and this is a 14 or no this is an 18 count Ada that I coffee dyed I love it and I was able to stitch it with one strand of thread that's why I like stitching on 18 count Ada is because I can stitch with one strand so it goes a little bit quicker. So then for the back or the bottom of the Biscornu, I picked another freebie, 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 there we go, from Samplers and Stitches. It's um, a summer, summer 2021 freebie, and I will insert the model there. I haven't started on it, but I just thought I'd show you guys. Um, so I'm going to do something a little bit different. I've never done this before, but I've seen this done where they do Biscornus on and they have two different color fabrics. So the top is one color and the bottom is another color. And so this is the fabric. It's kind of a rosy, pinky color. And so I think, I think those are gonna go really nice. 
you know, because I mean, it's a coffee dyed, so it's pretty neutral. And then this rosy color kind of matches the flower color in there. So I think that's going to be really cool. And then I did go ahead and I picked out Sullivan's floss um, for the summer pattern. And so I think it's going to look really, I can't wait. I can't wait to start. And I want to stitch both of those free patterns for myself at some point. Um, I, I really, I really like those. Okay. And apparently the part that I finished does not want to go back in the bag. Okay. So that is what I have been working on. So like I said, right now I'm concentrating on getting those gifts finished and yeah. And then I don't know what I'm going to move on to. Who knows? Okay. Haul. So I do have a little bit of haul. Like I said, I've been doing stitch from, stitch from stash and I'm still doing stitch from stash and I've been really good, but I, you know, over a month and a half, I've accumulated a few things. Um, first thing I wanted to say, so sorry, all of a sudden newfy hair. <laughs> It's a problem with having a very fluffy dog. Um, so in my last video, I had showed a, pic, um, a project that I was working on. And, oh, my book got bent. Um, and it was this uh, It was this one. This is Spell of the Moon from Blackbird Designs. And someone had asked where they could find this pattern, if it was in a book or if it was a standalone pattern. It is in a book. It is from uh, Winds of Autumn. Like I said, it's a Blackbird design. So just in case, or Blackberry, Blackbird Designs. Um, wow. Okay, so in case anyone else was interested, that's where that came from. Okay, so what, what have I gotten? Haul. Okay, so Floss of the Month. For June, I did another pack from Queen City, Queen City Dye Company, which is, and I will put a link to their face, wow. I will put a link to their Etsy shop. There we go. They do have a Facebook group too, but I'll put a link to their Etsy shop. And so I gotten a pack of their floss for April, no, May, May, and I really liked it. So they ended up having another one that I liked for, for June. And this one is kind of fall, so it has a lot of oranges, some yellows or golds and some browns and just, just a lot of really pretty colors. And I have used some of their floss that I bought in my last pack in some of my patterns or some of my projects and it is really nice to stitch with. So, and she sent me a little freebie too. So that was cool. So that is what I, my June floss of the month. And then for July, I got lucky and there was an opening in Angela uh, Color and Cotton's Floss of the Month and I got in. So I was so excited because I used to get her Floss of the Month and then I stopped and I switched to somebody else and yeah so I was really happy to be able to get back into her Floss of the Month because I love her Floss. So I am getting five um, primitive or neutral colors. So this is July and oh I love them. They're so pretty. So I cannot wait to stitch with those. And I can't wait to get next month. Okay, so while we're on floss or monthly stuff, we'll go into fabric. So for the fabric, I am in the Be Stitch Me fabric of the month. I'm doing the neutrals and I'm getting 40 count even weave, which is Verdal or Verdale. And so I'm not gonna take it out of the package because um, the Ver Verdale dies up, it's pretty solid, but it's a really pretty gray. This is called Stonehenge. And if you look at the linen or the Ada, it's darker. Uh, of course, being a Lugana type fabric, or it's, it's I, I believe it's the same or very similar to Lugana, it would be synthetic so it doesn't dye quite the same. But this is June's, this is Grog. And so, very pretty, I like those a lot. Then I did an order, uh, most sale, did some solid cottons. So I got a few of those. I always get two of every color. So I like this one. This is braise, brass, or no, grass, I'm sorry, it's grass. Wow, yeah, my poor brain, I don't know. This is, I don't know, but it's a very pretty bright pink. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. Friends or ferns or I don't know. But it's pretty. And I think these are supposed to be the same, but they're, they're a little bit different. But I like them. This would have worked in that, um, and I'm missing one. Must have fallen out somewhere. I'm sure I, I know I have it somewhere. So, must have just... Must have fallen out somewhere. That's okay. I'll find it. Okay, so then, like I said, we went to the Stitching Bee one day. And I got... So, I picked out... This one. I hadn't seen this one from Plum Street. This is Thankful for Thee. And I thought that was really cute. I don't have a lot of Thanksgiving Day patterns, so I liked that one. And then I caught this one as we were getting ready to leave. I saw this. This is the Trilogy. This is one of their Giggly Wigglies. And this is Birds. And Tweet. They have a cute little um, pillow, too. But I love Birds so much, and I just I thought this would be really cool to do. And then I picked up some floss while I was there. Oh, apparently a color and cotton snuck in there too. I don't know how that got in there, but okay. Um, just some different flosses to work with. So I always grab a few flosses when I'm there. Okay, so then, hold on. I'm going to have to bump the camera a second. While we were there, as we were leaving, my husband found a pattern that he liked. So this is Lady Liberty from Blackbird Designs. So he liked that one, so he bought that. And then he also had ordered, and I forgot to grab them, I'll have to show them in my next video, he ordered a couple Mirabilia's from 123 Stitch. He collects mirrors, kind of like artwork. Um, eventually they'll get stitched, but right now he's just kind of collecting them, and he asked me if there was something that I wanted, and I really wanted this new Plum Street um, flag flock, because, I mean, it's patriotic and it's chic, so of course. And I love it, I can't wait to start that at some point. And then, total surprise in the mail one day that showed up, my wonderful stitchy wife, Jen, sent me this adorable Madame Chantilly pattern. Or is it, is it Madame Chantilly? Yes, it is. Autumn delivery. And you can do it either like that, or you can do it with the witch. So cute. I really want to start. I might start this one for August, for camp for August. We'll see. Anyway, that's everything. And this is going to be a super long video. So thank you so much for joining me today. And hopefully you enjoyed what you saw and hopefully you will come back or subscribe. And yeah, so I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of July. And I'm going to try really hard to be back in August on time this time. So thank you guys so much and I will see you guys later. Bye everybody.